Hey y'all, how's everybody doing? Well, I want to speak about something in particular today. Um, in advance of a series that I'm going to be doing uh, called the Brittany S Series. And the reason I'm calling it the Brittany Series is in honor of a young lady who gave her life to Christ. And so, therefore, she is new in the Word of God. So, um, everything about God would be... Um, not necessarily new to a new Christian. So sometimes what people may have is preconceived notions about God. And sometimes what people have is uh, false information about God. And sometimes what people have is zero information about God. Now, I know you can't imagine that, right? I've actually met people who had never heard the name of Jesus when I was in, where was I? I was in New York City. And she was from Queens. New York. You know, it's a multicultural city, so you would certainly think, even if you didn't believe in Christianity, even if it was purely cultural, that she would have heard of the name of Jesus, but she had not. She's like, Jesus? Who is Jesus? I'm like, are you serious? I mean, you really don't know who I'm talking about? And she didn't. So, um, that being said, I think we should always uh, watch our attitude so that we don't appear haughty or sarcastic or you know, greater than thou kind of acting. Um, and so when I take on this series, it doesn't necessarily necessarily reflect what Brittany herself knows or doesn't know. What this series will be about is what if I had a brand new Christian in front of me, what would I personally, Beth Buchanan, who is not a schooled preacher, who's not a, a schooled teacher, um, but someone who is a student of the Word of God, and who in my prayer time have asked to hear from God what he wants me to get out of the Bible every time I read it. Like, I'll pray to him. Um, I'll ask the Holy Spirit to please reveal to me what he wants me to know at that point in my life. Because sometimes I have looked back over my life and uh, I would have even studied. Sometimes, you know, you'll you'll make notes in, or highlight the scriptures when you study the Bible and... Um, when you go back, what you learn that like you'll come back to restudy that same group of scriptures. Like maybe I'll do a study on Ephesians, and maybe when I was in my late twenties, God gave me this out of it. But when I went back in my late forties, He may have given me this. Well, part of that's where I am in my faith because I've aged, and in aging, I've learned more about life. And in um, studying Him over that twenty-year period, I've learned more about God, and so He's. Personally, I feel he spoon feeds us what we need at the time in our life. I believe when Jesus said take one day at a time, it was a matter of trusting God. You see, that's what went wrong, is when Eve stopped trusting God and listened to another voice. And then Adam stopped trusting God and listened to Eve's voice. And the two of them both messed up and listening to any voice but the voice of God. That being said, I'm going to segue into something that's really bothering me. And um, I'm going to tell you how I feel about it right now. And that is, there has been, uh, I've just noticed um, from a couple of comments when I did, I think what, uh, it was a Bible study, and I was talking about devotionals. And I have several devotionals. I have, oh my gosh, I have some that are like 80 years old. <laughs> um, I have some that are brand new and modern. I have some that are just thoughts, you know, um, scriptures laid out for you. Um, I'm trying to think. I think one of them, oh, I know one of them. Uh, Oswald Chambers, um, My Utmost for His Highest is one of the ones that I've used. Um, this one, Promises from God When You Doubt. And this is just, basically, it's just, it's just scriptures for a particular subject. So there is no commentary on the scriptures. It's just a listing of what this person who wrote this book felt were the scriptures to deal with a certain subject matter. For instance, um, this one is grace and the gift of grace and the scriptures that apply to grace. Can I tell you how easy this would be? Go to the concordance in the back of your Bible. Most of them have them nowadays. And it will give you all the scriptures where that word's mentioned. So to me, that one wasn't even hard, but it's one of the ones that, you know, just makes it easy for you to grab it. Maybe they didn't grab every single scripture, but maybe the ones for that set author or set of authors. 
Um, this one, um, it's called One God, One Plan, One Life. And this is a devotional by uh, Max Lucado. He's a very famous author. Lots of good books. To me, he's an emotional writer. He writes to the heart, and he always gets it with me. Every single time I read, it just touches me. And basically, he has one scripture at the top, and then a couple of paragraphs about it, and then a thought kind of summarizing what he thinks. He's a wise man in the, in the Lord, I believe. Not perfect like no one is, but I feel like um, it's worth a read when I am seeking the Lord. The last one is what I want to talk to you about, and that is I have often... When I've given, done a giveaway with makeup and handbags and um, jewelry and just a little fun girly stuff, um, I especially recently have made sure that I also include a Bible and a devotional. And usually I'll include some sort of a little, I don't know, some sort of a notebook and some pens or something to encourage you to journal or take notes in church or take notes as you're in your prayer time with the Lord as He speaks to your heart. And um, I mentioned many times, and I've often used, this is not the only devotional I use, obviously, and or have given away. There's been several others y'all have known that I've given away, but I really like the Jesus Calling one, because Sarah Young writes in a style I like, and that is, um, she writes as if Jesus were calling you, like calling you on the phone or something, and he has something to say, and it's usually short and sweet. It's usually a paragraph or two, and then she lists out a couple of scriptures that um, support kind of if Jesus did call you, what he might say, because here's the scripture that kind of supports it. Now, I've been criticized at least twice uh, in the comments for giving this away. I've been told that this is demonic, that it's new age, that it is, um, that she is, and that she sees herself as a witch or a clairvoyant or a medium, or that she is... Um, A prophetess or something like that because she sits down in her prayer time I've read what she has to say about that um, hold on I think it's in the beginning yet yeah, the introduction and um, she talks about a book where was it uh, I don't actually see it on this page hold on first of all she gives her background on who she is and, and um, how what her life was like before she became a Christian. And um, I will reread this. I will tell you right now. Sorry, because I don't see it. But somewhere, I know I've seen it online, where she talks about um, a writing from the 30s called God Calling. I have not checked into God Calling, uh, but apparently it is a New Age movement kind of thinking. Uh, where, uh, and she said, and she, I think the two writers were ladies who felt that God had actually pinned what they wrote. And um, I don't know if that meant they thought they were prophetesses or clairvoyants or what, witchcraft, whatever they thought they were. But the name God Calling and this, the, the fact that you could hear from God was something that kind of inspired her when she wrote her book. Now, her book, she talks about, is very simple where she would uh, she knew the word of god was inerrant she knew that jesus is god she knew that there's only one god she knew knew that there is only one source to know god um as far as his word written and that is the bible as his word incarnate it is jesus who is god she notes all these things can i tell you something when someone said that this woman was demonic a demon would not claim that the demons will do a lot of things to try to sound like God, but they're not going to guide you towards Jesus. I can tell you that. Um, but anyway, uh, they want they want to steer you away from Christ. They want to steer you away from God. So, um, also the fact that everything she writes, she has scriptural reference to the thought. Now, here's the thing about the thought: is it twisted? No, I've been I've read this a couple of years. No, it's not twisted to make it work. I think what she did was she journaled before. I think once she was born again, she continued journaling. But she did want a richer relationship with God where she um, says that she wanted to actually hear from him. She makes it very, very clear she did not actually hear from him audibly. But that she did feel that he may have impressed upon her heart as she wrote, not auto-writing, which is a clairvoyancy type thing or um 
a, a witchcraft type thing where they believe that the the body is actually moved to right. She never claimed any of that, even though these people say she claimed that. She doesn't. I, I, I listened to her interview. Sorry, not listened. Read her interview with CBN. And um, so she talks about the fact that um, she felt like she heard from God. And so she, write down what she, she wrote down what she felt like he said to her personally for that moment in her life. And the scriptures that he brought to mind for her that she had already been pursuing him and heard from him on. Now, first of all, she knew the word of God. So does Satan. So that doesn't necessarily impress me because Satan actually had the audacity to quote scripture to Jesus when Jesus was the 40 days in the desert. Uh, because he says it is written and Jesus said it is also written. Just those two lines tell you that Satan knows the word of God. He knows how to manipulate it and twist it. And Jesus said it is also written, meaning to be able to interpret it correctly is up to him. Meaning Christ in you, the Holy Spirit will interpret for you if you ask him to. And I believe him if you mess up and you didn't ask him to, that he would if your heart is to know God. And only God knows that. Um, the, all that being said, I think what she's trying to say is, I heard from God at these moments in my life, these days in my life, and I wrote down what I felt like he said to me, and I think I'll share it with you in a book. And these are the scriptures that I feel like that I got from God that back up what I'm saying. Now, it's up to you, not just this devotion, any devotion, you don't have to use a devotional, y'all. You can just get in the Word of God every day and look up a subject or just start reading a chapter. Just the Word of God's the thing. And that's what she points out. The Word of God is the thing you want to be a part of. She just wrote down her thoughts and, and put it into a book. Has it made her rich? I would imagine so. I really feel like when she initially did this, it wasn't for that. Anytime you read a devotion, anytime you read a translation of the Bible, you have to ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, let me get what you want me to get. And that doesn't mean because someone shared their thoughts of what God gave to them that they're wrong, evil, or satanic. So just be careful, you guys, in the way that we judge others, especially other Christians. I love you guys. I'll talk to you in the series.